Good morning. How does God address hypocrisy? Today we're studying Jeremiah verses, chapter 7, verses 8 through 15. Behold, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense to Baal, and walk after other gods whom you do not know? And then come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered to do all these abominations? Has this house, which is called by my name, become a den of thieves in your eyes? Behold, I, even I, have seen it, says the Lord. But go now to my place, which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it, because of the wickedness of my people Israel. And now, because you have done all these works, says the Lord, and I spoke to you, rising up early and speaking, but you did not hear, and I called you, but you did not answer, therefore I will do to the house which is called by my name, in which you trust, and to this place which I gave to you and your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh, and I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brethren, the whole posterity of Ephraim. Boy, that's, that's hot as a pistol. The people are not turning from their evil ways. In fact, they're doubling down on it. They're trusting in the words of false prophets. They're leaning on expectations that since this city houses God's temple, hey, we're all safe around here. They're openly sinning. Did you see verses 8 to 11? Wow. These are all violations of God's Ten Commandment law. Finally, he has his vow. He's going to remove his presence just as he's done before. He's going to remove it right here. And Ephraim is especially singled out. Ephraim, which is especially noticed in the Bible for the idolatry, uh, that apostate practice that they have. They're singled out. And we have to return again to the point that God is holy. He's calling us to holiness. He's calling Judah here to holiness. And they're not doing too well with it. But it's impossible to serve him and to serve Baal at the same time. And I say to you today, it is impossible today in these years to serve God and to serve science, to serve so-called science, to serve um, the media or the culture at the same time. It's impossible. You cannot have both pieces. Just think how impossible it is to split our allegiance between the God of heaven and earth, the Creator, and false idols, false ideas, and, and human ideas. Of course, that's just totally impossible. You can't do that. There can be no fellowship between light and darkness. But Christian, these things haven't changed. It's, it's just as true today as it was then. We cannot divide our affections between serving God and serving, serving the things around us today. You know, Jesus didn't have one hand nailed to the cross for us. You know, one hand holding onto the world and one hand nailed to the cross. He was entirely nailed to the cross for us. We need to be crucified daily. We can't just have one hand nailed to the cross either. We need to be all in for the kingdom of Jesus. What do you say about that? I say, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, help us to be completely aligned with you, completely following your word, completely seeking your spirit, completely surrendered, uh, giving ourselves to you every day. I can't worry about tomorrow or two days from now or a week from now. Lord, I just need to be right with you today. That's all I can really manage. Lord, will you please come and help me to surrender? Help me to be totally uh, in with you today, Lord. And so as I go through the rest of this day, please be my leader, Lord, be my guide. We are in a troublous place here. Without you, we will fail, Lord. Without you, we will perish. Please be our guide today. In Jesus' name, I ask for your help. Amen. Oh, friend, let's turn to him with all our hearts. We failed him many times. And he still wants us. He still calls us. Let's, let's turn back while we still can. Let's come closer. God be with you today.